WWE today has the best roster ever and some of the best wrestlers in the world, but it's still able to make us regret being WWE fans sometimes. Half of the year is gone and we've witnessed 8 pay-per-view events. These are the 6 worst matches coming from those pay-per-views. One year after his terrible WWE Championship reign, Jinder Mahal still loves to give us bad matches. This one was 15 minutes long in which 5 consecutive minutes were pure domination by Jinder, which means headlocks, armbars and whatever this is. In the last part it gets better but it's still not exciting, not awaited and not worth watching. Carmella to me is a great character, but when she applies those submissions on the ground and she starts to scream, I suddenly want to slap my laptop. This match has some of those moments, but it also has Charlotte in great shape. The match ends with Flair missing a moonsault and tweaking her knee coming down. Then Carmella capitalizes and rolls her up. Done. The Queen loses clean and the match just doesn't feel complete. It's too short and it's too bad to see Charlotte lose in such a poor way. Overall this match was mediocre, made mostly of Samoa Joe's offense and ended by a good old John Cena comeback by Reigns. So what's bad about it? Well, it was the main event of the pay-per-view, but there was nothing on the line and there was not such a hype to explain that position on the card. Besides, the only build up to this match was... Hey Roman, after Brock rapes you for good, I'm next in line, is it okay to you? Sure, my yard is open 24-7. When a rivalry gets a lot of TV time, with a lot of segments, nauseating segments of course, I tend to think that the match on pay-per-view is going to have a good amount of time or at least be a good or relevant match. Instead, I felt like WWE tried on purpose to make me hate this feud. In fact, their only singles match was a squash, with zero offense by Sami. So now, you can put Sami Zayn and Zack Ryder on the same super jobber level and there's nothing else to say here. Alright, Asuka is not the dominant woman that she was in NXT and her streak is over at this point. But watching the best female wrestler lose in 5 minutes, basically by one move from Carmella, really hurts. I understand the heel tactics and I'm all for it, but this was just too much. Also because Asuka looked so stupid when she was standing there waiting for something to happen and forgot about Carmella. WrestleMania 33 After falling to the Roman Empire, The Undertaker leaves gloves, coat and hat in the center of the ring, disappearing in the smoke. WrestleMania 34 Those same gloves, coat and hat get hit by some flashes and The Undertaker is back in action, squashing John Cena in less than 3 minutes. Now he's wrestled more in 2018 than he has in the past few years what he only used to fight at WrestleMania. So to sum it up, in 3 minutes, WWE was able to screw up an epic end to the career of The Undertaker and a legendary match between him and John Cena. Bravo! This was truly better than most people say. Easily the most brutal one-on-one -on -one match in years. The problem to me was the overbooking. It is not humanly possible to kick out from 5 F5s, especially when people like Strowman and Samoa Joe went down after just one. Besides, Lesnar punished Reigns too much, and this could make sense only if Reigns would have won in the end, but he didn't. So what was the reason for booking Reigns so strong? 
watching this punishment felt as brutal as it felt exaggerated. You know, watching back all of these matches, I realized that it is unusual nowadays to have bad wrestling matches, because the in-ring quality is very high in the 99% of the cases, even when we talk about Carmella or Alexa Bliss. In fact, most of these were bad matches because of bad booking choices. Nonetheless, I have to admit that I am pretty much sport entertained. And what about you? Let's have a conversation in the comment section below. And don't be a hater, be a face.